So a human RU500 is simply regular human insulin that's five-fold concentrated. So you're going to be giving the same number of units in one-fifth of the volume. But when you concentrate regular insulin five-fold, you do change how it gets absorbed and acts within the body. So Dr. De La Pena did an insulin clamp study where you can look at both insulin action and insulin levels. And what he found from the insulin action standpoint is the onset of U500 insulin is within about 20 minutes, which was no different than U100 regular insulin. So it shares with U100 regular insulin this onset that really predicates giving it 30 minutes before a meal and also fulfills the criteria for being a mealtime insulin. But unlike U100 regular insulin, it peaked a little bit later, about six hours versus five hours, and can last up to 24 hours. So not only does it provide some mealtime action, but it also has a long duration that makes it suitable for providing some basal insulin. So you can get both prandial and, meal and basal action with a single injection, and from the patient's standpoint, a single copay. The initiation titration study was a 24-week open-label study looking at patients on high doses of U100 insulin to see what would happen if they were converted to U500 insulin given either as twice daily or three times daily. There was a four-week lead-in period where the U100 regimens could be adjusted, insulin secretagogues were stopped during that four-week in period, but any other oral agent could be continued. They were then randomized to twice daily or three times daily. And over the ensuing study period, the A1C dropped by 1.1 with the three times a day dosing and 1.2 with the twice a day dosing. So really there was no difference in outcomes between the two from the standpoint of A1C. Likewise, there was no difference in weight gain or severe hypoglycemia. There were some differences in minor hypoglycemia with more events occurring with the BID versus the TID group. And the patterns of hypoglycemia in both groups very much mimic the concept that this insulin has both a prandial and basal aspect to it. During the four-week lead-in period, some interesting things happened. The total daily dose of insulin went up by about 5% or so, but the A1C dropped by 0.6%. This study effect is very much exaggerated and speaks to the problem with compliance that these patients have with high-dose insulin regimens. At the time of transition, if the A1C was 8% or lower, there was a 20% reduction in the total daily dose of insulin. There was a 38 unit reduction of insulin at the time of transition. It then took them five weeks before they got back to the baseline dose, but by six weeks the A1C had already dropped by 0.8. Again, very suggestive that there's a compliance issue with these patients. But you know that's not too surprising. When you look at the U100 regimens, the range of insulin injections went anywhere from two to 10 injections a day. Imagine asking your patients to take 10 injections of insulin a day. Um, the median number of injections was five. So here we are taking someone on five injections on the average and changing them just two or three injections of U500, and lo and behold, you get a nice reduction in A1C. In the trial, there was also uh, measures of compliance. Uh, both BID and TID U500 had better measures of compliance versus the U100 regimen. There was also a measure of in injection site pain. BID and D TID did better than U100 regimens for injection pain. And from the compliance standpoint, the disease state burden standpoint, uh, BID actually did better than TID. So based on the product label and based on FDA, when we switch to U500, that has to be a type 2 diabetic on more than 200 units of insulin per day. That's combining basal and meal time at the same time. When I see those patients, which constitute typically 2 to 5 percent of all diabetics on insulin, I switch based on the study which was published a few years ago where they took patients on U100 and they switch all the insulins to just U500. So when you switch to 500, you use it by, just by itself. You can do it as two injections a day. And the way I switch depends on what the A1C is at the time I see those patients. If the A1C is more than 8%, I switch unit per unit. So the 100% dose of U500 will be switched U500. If the A1C is below 8%, I take 80% of the total U100 insulin dose 
and use that as the initial U500 dose. And that's what they did in the landmark study called the HOOD study, where they switched patients from U from U100 to U500. Historically, U500 insulin was used for patients that were very insulin resistant. Uh, a, a doctor might feel very comfortable starting it when patients were on four or five, 600 units of insulin a day. But what's interesting in this trial, over two thirds of the patients were taking 300 or less units of insulin a day. So from 201 to 300. So this is not just for patients that are very insulin resistant. Remember, these patients were mostly on basal bolus insulin therapy. Their A1C was 8.7 at the time of randomization. Um, these are patients not well controlled on conventional therapy. Um, so, you know, don't just think of it with really insanely insulin resistant patients. Again, 200, over 200 units a day, A1C not a goal. It's time to think about U500 insulin.